All right, everybody, welcome back in another Garnet Trust exclusive. This one is presented by our friends at 360 Clean. Shout out to 360 Clean, 360clean.com is how you can find out some more information. Joined now by our friend here, Jalen Daniels, Gamecock quarterback. Jalen, uh, first of all, appreciate you taking the time today, man. How you doing? I'm doing amazing, sir. How about yourself? I I'm great, man. And uh, and real quick, I see you rocking your 360 Clean shirt. Just want to take sure. the opportunity to thank those guys. 866-572-3964. Uh, Again, like I, I told everybody, 360clean.com. They offer health-focused cleaning systems, competitive pricing, and they are run by Super Gamecocks. Allison and Barry Bodiford, uh, Jalen, how um how thankful are you for sort of the opportunities that NIL has brought you, and uh, specifically the folks at 360 Clean sponsoring this interview, man? I'm I'm extremely grateful. You know they're doing some great things over there, so just a uh, very blessed for opportunity to you know be uh be partnering with them and uh, whatnot and representing them. So yeah, big blessing, sir. Definitely, man. So, uh, again, this interview is brought to you by 360 Clean. We're going to talk to Jalen here a little bit about his story and his experience at South Carolina so far. And um, I, I want to go back in time a little bit, man. I I've heard a little bit of your story. I know maybe some Gamecock fans have, maybe some of them haven't. So, uh, let's go back in time. I was looking at your bio. Um, didn't really start playing football till later in your, your high school life. Is, is that right? Um, what uh, I guess, first of all, man, I've seen you throw, so I I know you probably could throw the ball around in the yard. What what took so long to get you out there on the field, and uh, kind of uh, what was it that that kind of pulled you to uh, to playing quarterback and playing football for the first time? So uh, growing up, I was always a hooper. I just I, I was in love with basketball. All my brothers had, had played football, but I was just I like the I like the court a lot more. <laughs> and then, um, but I'd always like trained with uh, Gio, which is mine and Spencer's quarterback coach. So seventh, eighth grade, I don't play football. So like I'm in basketball, but still training, of course. And then come freshman year, I get kind of good at throwing the ball. So I'm like, all right, let's let's, uh, let's see what we can do with this. And then from freshman year, it's just uh, all football from there. Yeah, it took off from there, man. So um, I understand uh, you were one of those guys, and I know there's a lot of kids from from high school that got I guess affected by COVID as far as their recruiting process goes uh, there was that stretch where I don't know man it was like a solid year and a half where coaches couldn't be out they couldn't evaluate um, I know you were also from what I understand playing behind some guys that went on to to play college ball the younger parts of your high school career um, can you maybe take us through that and give us the details um, as you kind of worked your way into playing time uh, like the, the early parts of your high school career Definitely. So, uh, freshman year, you know, I had a, I had a great uh, quarterback in Jacob Conover. Uh, he's uh, playing over at BYU now. Sophomore year, got to sit behind uh, Hiram Bourne, who's over at Utah now. And then junior year, uh, just uh, in the in the QB room with uh, Evan Svoboda. He's over at Wyoming. Just a, a great group of guys. Got to learn a lot from them and. Uh, I'm uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to just see what they do, the do's and the don'ts, you know. Definitely, man. So, uh, what what is that like looking back, just kind of knowing? I mean, I can't imagine there are many high school QB rooms where it was just like college player after college player after college <laughs> player. Uh, what was that like, just kind of having that experience and you know being relatively inexperienced yourself, getting you know just used to the game, learning as you said, do's and don'ts yeah. uh, along the way, man. Yeah, definitely. So experience is always like experience is always like helpful, especially for a quarterback. So it was a little bit tough only being able to play my senior year. But I think just I think my preparation, I was always prepared in, in my eyes to to play if I needed to. And I think that was the biggest thing. Obviously, game reps are a big deal. I, I got some junior year, but I think um, I think it was helpful being able to, you know, be mentored and, and kind of sit behind those guys and see what they do. So obviously experience is a, is a big thing, but also being able to see somebody, somebody else play and, uh, you know, see what you would do in that situation, what you wouldn't do. So, yeah. Definitely, man. So you go into your, your senior year, you start, you put up big numbers. Um, how, how was that to sort of see your preparation and all that actually turn into, you know, the on the field product and the success and all that stuff. And, and then I guess at that point it started to kind of roll over into some recruiting interest as well. Definitely. So my senior year, I was blessed with a 
blessed with the a new, a new school. Got a yes, yeah, so the senior year got blessed with the, with the new coach and um, Coach Carter. Got to go learn behind him. He's just a he's a, he's a teacher of the game. Like it was just it was a great opportunity, just a great environment, great place, and um, he put me in the best like best position every week. So it was it was really awesome. It was a great experience my senior year to be able to go learn behind him and um and execute what he what he was calling. So let, let's talk a little bit about South Carolina, Jalen. I, I know um, as far as the recruiting process goes, it was a little bit late in the process yeah. compared to most, uh, you know, kind of how it played out. Um, you know, from what I understand, kind of the Spencer Rattler connection, you mentioned it earlier, y'all had the same QB coach. Yeah. Um, give us the behind the scenes. Like, was Spencer like, hey, Coach Satterfield, like I got this guy you need to look at. Um was Geo like, hey, I got this guy. How, uh, from what you understand, how did this sort of start to, uh, I guess, play out with South Carolina getting involved in your recruiting process? Right. So, um, so Spence was down in Arizona, right? He's down in AZ. And we were training. We had a session going with Geo. And Geo had told me, like, you know, be prepared this week because we're going to have a few OCs come down. And then, um, so I'm like, what I'm there every single I'm I'm there every single day just waiting you know waiting on an opportunity and then Sat came down uh, he saw me throw he was pretty he, like he was a little bit shocked at first he was like uh, you know why are you not going you know to major college football I was like you know I'm just trusting God I'm being patient and uh, waiting for an opportunity and um, you know thank God he was there because he's a he's a great coach and uh, definitely uh, blessed for blessed to be there. <laughs> you know, get up to South Carolina. Yeah, I know. Um, I want to say this was maybe June, July. At some point in the summer, yeah. you took a visit to South Carolina because um, I remember um, I was actually there at their camp that day because and you yeah. were out there watching and hanging out with the coaches and I guess getting a feel for the program. Um, when you took that visit, what were maybe some things that caught your attention? What were the things that make made you kind of say, all right, this is this is the place. This is where I want to sort of take my chance and and try to go uh, be the guy here. I, I guess what were some things that caught your attention on that visit, man? Um, I think, I think just the culture, man. Like there's a there's a culture of, you know, whoever we play, we can uh we can beat them, and we that's how we prepare every week. Is regardless of who our opponent is, regardless of who's lining up across us, we uh we have a, a great shot or in our minds that we can beat them and we can compete at the highest level. And uh, Beamer and Sat just they really emphasize that, and uh, I believe them, and uh, I still I still do, and I think we can do it. So I, I know one thing uh, we like for these interviews to kind of be a little bit of a behind the scenes for the fans on what goes on in the day to day life of like a college football player. So um, I know being a freshman, sometimes there's a little bit. It's got to be a bit of an adjustment going <laughs> from high school to college. <laughs> I see you smiling about it, so. Um, give, give us a little, just a little glimpse, man. Um, what does the day to day look like? And I, I know certain days, like you have to have a day off, like that's by NCAA rule, but, um, especially right now in season when y'all have meetings, practices, class, um, right. how, how does the day start? What times does the day start? And maybe just give us a little glimpse, like kind of blow by blow. What are you doing uh, throughout the day at this time of year? Right. So, um, it's just, it's just constantly work. It's constantly work. So we, uh, our alarms usually go off about six, uh, get to the facility at seven, and then um, we'll eat, weigh in, do all that stuff, have a few meetings, go out and practice. And um, then, yeah, that. so it's about seven to 12 football stuff, and then we got to go get ready for classes. And then after that, Obviously, as QBs, you're, you want to be prepared, so we'll head back up to the facility after after classes, get some more film work in, and then um, probably leave about eight, eight nine o'clock, just depending. I'm heading over to tonight just to you know get some extra extra work in, but it's uh, it's a lot of work. It's constant, but um, it's what we sign up for, and uh, you know we love it. Wouldn't have any way any other way. Yeah, a full full day, obviously, man. Um... How has that been kind of getting to know this offense? I know uh, the, the talk is it's like an NFL-style offense. So it's yeah. kind of one of those things where um, I, I know at first it can be a little heavy. It's like one of those things where once you get settled in, it's going to put you in a position, obviously, for the next level to already know a lot of things. Maybe some college quarterbacks don't. But um, when you're first coming in as a freshman, 
what is that like to sort of just get all the, the different terminology and concepts and, and all those things down pat, man? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely hectic. It's definitely hectic, but, you know, gratefully out of South Carolina, we have a, a great quarterback room and a great QB staff. You know, we got Freddie Kitchens, Coach Satterfield, Nick Coleman, uh, Coach Zeb. So they've just they've done a great job at explaining and, you know, breaking down the offense. And obviously we're still uh, it's still a work in pro pro progress. You know, we're just uh, still trying to or I'm still trying to get it. Only been here about two months and a half. But, uh, you know, they do it. They do a great job. You know, they, those are some really smart coaches, really smart men. So I'm just trying to pick their brains and uh, get what I can from them. Man, so I'm always curious, the guys coming from out of state and uh, and obviously, you know, Arizona guy played your high school ball in California. Um, what and this doesn't have to necessarily be a football answer. Um, mm -hmm. What 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 was maybe the biggest difference coming out here? Was there anything about the state of South Carolina or the university or Columbia? is there anything that's just been like, wow, I didn't I did not expect that. Or has there been a hardest part or just a most interesting part about the transition for you? Um, not necessarily like. Not just something that's different is like you guys definitely love your your country music down here. I'm all for it, but um, you know you guys are are definitely big on that country music. So I'm just trying to uh, get caught up the game and uh learn learn as much as I can down here. Have uh so have have you gotten into it at all, or are you just kind of like eh, I don't I don't know about that. <laughs> um oh my goodness, there's this one song I'm trying to remember. Uh, one of my linemen are showing it to me. Uh, I think it's called like uh, Venera or something like that. I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to keep you updated. But um, yeah, I'm a big fan of that one. Who? So um, when y'all are in the locker room, like post practice, mm -hmm. who who gets the? I don't, I don't even know. Is it an aux cord? Is it a Bluetooth? Like, do, do one of the? Is there a guy that gets like? Is there a particular player that gets to control the music, or how does that work? I think we definitely have like a rotation because sometimes you just don't know. Like sometimes. Most of the time, the music is really good, but then sometimes there'll be like that one song, and everyone kind of just stops and like, "Who's playing this?" <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, we have a we have a rotation going, and uh, we're always bumping in there. So, so I, I guess that's a good way to like kind of catch catch some flack from your teammates, is if you yeah. pick pick the wrong song for the uh, for the aux chord there, yeah. man. Uh, don't be that guy, don't be yeah, that. <laughs> definitely don't be that guy, man. So. Um, we always like to maybe talk a little non-football stuff, let the fans get to know you a little bit off the field. Um, is there anywhere here in Columbia, maybe a restaurant? Uh, you don't have to give specifics. You can if you want. But what's the favorite food? Like, it literally can be like, all right, I just like, you know, fettuccine Alfredo, or it can be very specific. Is there is there anything that's kind of like the go-to, like the last meal type thing? So I haven't I haven't really had the time to get out around too much, but uh, my lineman after one of our lifts took me to Bojangles and uh, they got some some great food, some great food. I love the chicken over there, so you know I'm a, I'm big on that. So but Bojangles not a thing out where you're from, no. is that right? No, not at all. <laughs> at least I, I've never heard of, of a Bojangles down there. Yeah, it's pretty big here. Obviously, it's a a big thing. Um, have you had Chick Fil A yet? Have you? Yeah. Tried yeah. That? Okay. Is that a thing out there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um. Hey. So one thing. Let's reverse it. We don't have In and Out. Is uh. No. That's is, that's like, In and Out was like, it's like second nature down down in Arizona. It's weird. It's like, oh, nobody really, you know, knows about In and Out down here. Yeah. I'm. I. Uh, I would love for us to get an In and Out. From what I understand, like. It's only West Coast. Like nothing. If you start the closer out this way, you get um, no in and out whatsoever. All we, I mean, we have five guys, but um, right. not not quite the same. Um, all right. So I, I guess um, any anything else just about this area that um, what, what did you think of the heat when you got out here? Like I know these people. I know y'all. It's so, it's hotter out there, right? But right. But watch this. So. Playing wise, you definitely want to like play in Arizona's heat because the ball like stays dry. It's dry heat. Your hand is getting moist. But down here, it's like you can feel it. Like it's like it's thick heat. So it's like you can't really escape it. It's like in your body. <laughs> so I like people have asked me like, what's hotter here, or Arizona? It's definitely here. It's definitely here. 
<laughs> really? Okay, because I, I know they always talk about it's like 117 out there, but it's like. Yeah, it is, but it's like, it's it's, it's just durable. Like here, you, it's like, it'll be like 90 and then that, that humidity hits and it's like, ah. Yeah, it's it's like sticky out yeah, here. Exactly. Um, speak speaking of that summer, you know, summer workouts hit. I guess you you got here. Um, I want to say was that beginning of August? Um, uh, right as fall camp started, so a month before our first game. What what was that like, man? I mean, you you avoided like the Luke Day summer workouts, but yeah. also I imagine that's a that's a quick transition to just be like, all right, here's a helmet, um, hit the field. Yeah. Uh, did you have to kind of play catch up a little bit there at the beginning? Oh, de- definitely. And I, and I still am, but, um, as I said before, you know, we just have a, have a great QB staff. So, you know, they're doing, uh, they're doing what they can. And obviously the focus is on Spencer understandably, but they're, uh, they're getting me ready and, um, preparing the whole QB room. So they do a great job of that. What's it been like to be around Spencer every day, just knowing y'all's past and friendship and all that? So. It's definitely dope because I know him. I know him as like, yeah, we train, but I know him like as a friend down in AZ. But just seeing like, seeing his dedication and his work, like that man is on a mission. He's definitely focused, and uh, you can see the dedication. You can see just he has this tunnel vision of like a focus. He gets the guys going for practice. You know, always the first in, last out. So uh, you know, it's definitely I'm definitely taking what I can from him and uh, using him as a as an example of what I want to be and how I want to train and just my focus and intentions. You know, we talked about um, Gio a little bit earlier, but uh, you, you want to give a shout out to him and maybe. Uh, uh, Gio, my guy, I love you, man. I love you, Gio. Well, what 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 is he uh, what has he meant to you and in, in your career so far, and what what's the thing you've most learned from him, man? Um, he's meant everything. Like I'm I'm not where I am today without Gio, and that's uh that's in every aspect, throwing wise, you know, mentally wise, and um just here here in general because he's uh he's given me multiple opportunities and um i'm glad this one this one paid off but geo's uh he's just been he's kind of been my like just a calming place like the thing because obviously you know getting recruited like only your senior year at, at quarterback can get a little bit frustrating but geo's always just kept me he's kept me calm he's like hey your time's coming you can throw the ball just trust it and um yeah, he's a he's a he's a great guy, man. He's a great guy, man. Definitely, definitely, man. So, uh, final couple of things I've got for you here, Jalen. Um, you got experience Williams Price Stadium for the first time. Wow. Um, yeah, and I see the reaction there. Obviously, you've experienced it a couple times now, but uh, again, being an out of state guy coming in, it's always interesting. You know, some kids in this state they like grow up kind of maybe going to games or really paying attention and just dreaming of being in that stadium. You come in from out of state. What was like the first reaction, uh, just to to the crowd, the lights, uh, the entrance, the music, all that stuff? So some of the older guys were telling me, like, you know, just just wait when you go out there, and uh, you know, I was trying to like prepare for it because I'm like, okay, I've seen I've seen college stadiums before, but just like running out of that tunnel, man, looking around, look like up at the crowd, it just it doesn't get but any better than that, man. It doesn't, and uh, we have some great fans, you know, and they tend to pack out our, our stadiums every time we have home games. So, you know, it's just a, it's a big blessing. It's a big blessing. I'm definitely grateful to, you know, be in an atmosphere and environment like that. What did you think of the LED lights, like the new light show and all that stuff? Love it. We have a, we have a great production staff, man. Goodness gracious. They, uh, they do a lot of work, and uh, us players are definitely grateful for that. Definitely, man. So uh, final thing here, I guess um, – What's the next step for you? I know you said you're kind of trying to um, get settled in and everything, play catch up. Is there anything you personally are just focused on as far as improving your game? I know it's always overall. Like everybody wants to improve all aspects. But what what is your mindset like right now as far as your focus uh, as uh, we kind of get into almost the second half of this season, believe it or not? Um. I think I I think just keeping this this uh this plan of attack that I have going, you know, just uh, trying to be as prepared as I can, and uh, keep learning this offense because uh you know I'm I'm confident with with a lot of other aspects of my game. Just uh gotta gotta learn this offense, and uh, I'm doing so. And these coaches are helping me help me uh get prepared. He is South Carolina quarterback Jalen Daniels, a freshman at the University of South Carolina. 
Jalen, uh, like I said, man, we appreciate the time. Uh, good luck the rest of the way, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Thank you so much, Mr. Mitchell.